Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 10 of our FTV Skies Expert Mode Let's Play. Today, I want to start automation of many different things. One of those being a better way to produce bow diesel. Because right now, ooh, those chickens are loud. Let me turn them off. Because right now, our bio diesel production, well, it's first of all, it's halted because I haven't filled it up with spider eyes. I believe that's the only thing I'm missing right now. Yeah, I'm missing some spider eyes over here. However, this system isn't the most efficient for biodiesel creation anyways, so I do really want to move on from that. Plus, it eats up a decent amount of our stress units. Also, I want to go ahead and get our power here hooked up to actually be working, because at the moment, if I turn these guys off, we don't have the amount of stress capacity to actually run our diesel generators as well, sorry, our generator coils off of our diesel generators, as well as our entire create system. So I do want to remove some of the excess bulk that we have here. And that mainly being the bow diesel production we can get rid of and maybe some of these things here but uh belts don't use up stress units so the belts running back and forth are actually fine also our mechanical crafter over here eats up a decent amount of stress units while i have it on so that doesn't help however i should add a clutch to this guy here just because he like i said he does eat up quite a bit and i have added a clutch to everything else because if I remove that, how much stress units does that free up? I was at pretty max capacity. Oh wow, that freed up 2,000. So I wonder if I could... Nope. You know, it was helpful. If I turn it down to like 80? No, okay. I didn't think so. We'll do 128. We'll turn that guy off. I've also had to go ahead and turn off my sifters over here because i upgraded them all to brass sifters which is actually pretty easy to do by the way and these are much better sifters you just surround your sifter with some brass redstone and brass sheets and these guys wow they they started pumping i, I haven't been on very long today i logged off pretty much right after last episode so these guys have filled up like i have 1.3 thousand iron and i did use a small bit of it just in preparation for this episode so like these guys produce a lot of resources really fast with these brass sifters however i did add a clutch back here to turn this guy on and off as i need him also what we've gone ahead and done is i finally set up relays underneath our base to connect mana to our center or sorry source to our center area here so we should have flight permanently i used three regular relays so if i go up here the first one is just right here and it's just sending a uh, source all the way down into a splitter relay and these guys aren't too hard to make either a regular relay as a source stone with gold plates we have plenty of gold and then the splitter is nether quartz lapis and relay so i went ahead to that threw it in our human chamber and we should have permanent flight as long as i don't go too far away and then we will set up flight rituals eventually however the flight ritual unless i trade it from a villager is decently expensive it's two diamonds ender pearls wilden wings and like stuff like this we don't have uh well we actually do have uh wilden wings but i don't think we have diamonds in access at the moment so we're not going to worry about that just yet if we get it from a villager we get it from a villager speaking of villagers just another little thing i did is i moved our master villager into a trading hall and i went ahead and traded with a new villager to get ourselves mendostein so i can cross that off the list today because that is one thing we are going to need for better bile diesel creation as mendostein is the best way to get ethanol in the pack so if you look here in the thermonomatic uh processing plant this is how we're going to be using we're going to be using pneumaticraft to get ethanol and 100 millibuckets of yeast culture will turn into 200 millibuckets of ethanol with one mendelstein i want to jump right into it so the first thing we got to do is get ourselves some garden cloches made up now these are just iron mechanical components incandescent light bulbs stained glass or sorry just regular glass and treated wood planks the incandescent light bulbs are just bamboo or paper glass and a copper ingot in our engineer's workbench so if we grab some copper we got to smelt some up <laughs> Grab some glass, so we got to smell some of that too, and we grab some bamboo, and we just chuck it in here. We can get some incandescent light bulbs. 12 is actually plenty. We all, we do want three for mendosteen, three for mushrooms, and three for tomatoes. So that's actually plenty. And all I need is iron mechanical components. Let me grab the rest of the copper out of here. And I do want 12 of these guys. With some more glass, I can go ahead and grab myself 12 cloches, or not 12, Nine cloches. Yeah, there we go. 
So we have all nine cloches we need. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done a little bit of planning down here, just so we can figure out exactly how we want to go ahead and do things. So just to explain it, we're going to have one of our thermomatic processing plants right here, creating yeast culture. This one will create ethanol. This will be our mixer. Back here, we will have a vegetable oil and then our sequential fabricator to make tomato seeds. And then over here, we'll just have a main buffer for all of our items, which will pump out with a logistical sorter into each individual machine. Now, what happens with these guys is each one of these will have puller and pusher upgrades to push into the next barrel and then this guy right here will send fluid all the way up following this line kind of into our biodiesel or diesel machines over in that corner so it'll be a long trek over however i do have my rotational compressor right here probably could have made it over in that corner but i think it's fine and also this is all contained within one chunk so we don't have to worry about crossing boundaries or anything like that now i want to go ahead and set up all of my garden closures i'm going to do three lines. I didn't really plan this part out. However, I can run a decently compact system here. So I'll run... Okay, we'll run something like this. These two will share an item output. These guys will be by themselves. And we can just run logistical transporters through the middle. So the top one here is the item output. And this guy will run into this drawer here. And yeah, going down like that is fine. And then on the bottom, we need to run water. And we'll run water in from the back. So we'll go this way. And all of those now have water and what we'll do is we'll do a aqueous accumulator with two leaves similar technique bucket mode on and fill that with water and then we'll turn this guy to extract and all of these guys will fill up instantly perfect so the water is filling up now i want to go ahead and stick in a mycelium or sorry mycelium for our mushrooms that'll go in those two. Oh, that's dirt we'll do another mushroom once we've collected one we got to do our tomatoes in the middle oh wait it's tomato seeds i need there we go. We'll do our tomato seeds in the middle. And I do want to throw that one in there. And then we'll do our mendo seeds on the edge here. And three guard closures should be enough. I can't imagine us needing more than that. However, if we do by chance need more, what we can do is run fertilizer into these guys or expand backwards a bit. We can always go one more back on each one and then push this back a bit. However, I think three of each will be fine. I can't imagine, like I said, needing more than that. I do kind of wish this was centered, but I think it's fine. Like, it's not, like, it's pretty compact, right? Like, this system is decently compact, shouldn't be too bad. And then what we need is wire connectors on each one of these, which will run into a relay up top. So like I said, all of these guys will run into a relay, and we'll just connect them all up. These aren't insulated wires, so I do have to be careful around them, because otherwise if we walk into them, we will be shocked. However, insulated wires aren't too hard to make. We could have made them if I look at the recipe. It is just tough fabric, which is just hemp. However, I like to live on the edge. So that is there. And then if we just run in a weird... Oh, we do need flight really badly. <laughs> Every episode, I'm going to keep saying it. I need flight. I need flight and I need flight. However, if we do this in 54 seconds, should be plenty enough time. I do need to run a relay. We're just going to have floating blocks. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so I went ahead and ran our power just down here, following some white concrete. Now, obviously, this is temporary. It's not a permanent solution. However, LV wires only run so far of a distance, so I can't just run straight up to straight down. So it's a little janky. However, it is fine for right now, as we did decide to build way down here, and we decided to put our diesel engines way up there. Wasn't the best planning. All right, so it turns out I just wanted to test our system a bit. I had to remove this entire section, so our entire cake factory. I had to remove all of our fans, and if I turn this guy on, it runs at 64 RPM. However, our pneumatic craft is no longer working, and we need pneumatic craft to be working to do what we want to do this episode. So what we're going to have to do, turn these guys off, and we're going to have to disconnect, I'd say probably two of our generators here because it does it's just it's not going to work if i try it other any other way at the moment so we'll go ahead and disconnect our generator i will do a carbon brush here and then we'll try with this if i can get my flight back i need a flight counter of how many times i need to say i'm going to get flight before i actually get it and we put an lv connector here try this again not like that this is not going to produce i don't think enough power for our systems to run efficiently down there but we'll see it's going to be some trial and error here i think i need 96 for our generators to run it's 90 oh 96 is even fast enough okay we'll go to 108 okay we're running out of 144 which is producing us actually more fe than it was before our rotational compressors are also running so we're producing 552 rf per tick at the moment 
And if I go down here, our garden closures should start working immediately. Look at that. So I can go ahead and actually plant this mushroom back over here because that's what we'll need. And I'm going to go ahead and lock these guys so we don't lose any items. And look at all those items coming in. Awesome. So these guys, and these guys have a nice little animation in the middle, or at least the tomatoes do. Mendo scenes, not so much. And then the mushrooms, uh, they're just a little mushroom. But the tomatoes are nice in the middle. But yeah, we got all this set up. Now we got to go ahead and get all of these machines set up and filtered. Now, the basis of all those machines is the machine frame. This guy is made in the mechanical crafter. It is some compressed iron, light engineering blocks, redstone engineering blocks, heavy engineering blocks, and pretty machine frames. The heavy engineering blocks require overcharged iron, so I went ahead and made some more. Yeah, I made 16 more. I don't think I'm going to make that many machine blocks. However, we have it just in case. And that should be everything we need. Now, if we come over here to our mechanical crafters, I have moved the hoppers to the place where we need them. So, compressed iron, redstone, compressed iron, compressed iron, engineering, compressed. Come over to this side, same thing. And I do want to grab myself a clock. Otherwise, I will have to do this manually. And do you know what? We can actually steal it from below our squeezer. No one will ever know. Awesome. So I'm just going to stick the clock over here. Give it a 20 pulse signal. And this should be a decent timer. Okay, that's pretty close. It could be fine to tune just a bit. However, we do have our six machine frames done. Now I can go over here and craft all the machines. So the sequential fabricator requires copper gears, redstone flux. Oh, I don't actually have any tin smelted up, so I should grab some tin, which is one of our newly required resources. Some raw tin here. What's cooking up some iron? I do my copper gears as well. I don't believe I have copper gears made up either. No, I don't. So we'll go back over to our crafters that we were just at. They're still crafting, aren't they? Yeah, they have a few more recipes left. So what was the other thing I needed? It was just the redstone flux cable, right? Yeah, it was redstone flux coil. We just need the one of those and a crafting table as well. Pretty easy. All right, so I can actually go ahead and use my pressure chamber, which we haven't gotten a chance to use, as we do need turbine rotors in the middle of the fluid mixer. Luckily, we only need the one fluid mixer, and each turbine blade is one gold and two redstone. Now, this is a trade at level two from the villagers here. However, both mine unlock transistors and capacitors, and I don't have another trader block. Actually, I do have another trader block. However, I think I'm just fine. We're going to actually go ahead and use this guy, as we haven't got a chance to show it off yet. Oh, and there we go. That was instant. These guys should be coming out any second now awesome so that's our turbine blades i now i can come over here and make our copper gears as well so i'm going to set this to always off put in our copper gears and we can craft them manually eventually this will be a much easier recipe as we won't need to use that we can use a multi servo press however for now it is what we have so i'll come over here and make our first machine which is the sequential fabricator which needs the tin we just smelted up. And we will automate our tin smelting. However, I, I do have a good plan for that, or just our ore smelt in general, and we're done with that. Now, next thing we got to do is grab our thermomatic processing plant, which is quite a few things we don't actually have. So we're going to grab six tanks. I need some more iron bars. Okay, with some more iron bars, we can make some more fluid tanks. And this will allow us to make our first turbine rotor. And we should be able to make the fluid mixer once we get some more heavy engineering blocks. Should be just as simple as this. Oh, we need some more steel. Okay. Luckily, I have four. Actually, I do have... We'll do two of those, and we'll do some copper as well. I didn't prepare any of the resources, like I said. However, we can go ahead and stick those in there. Heavy machine frames, fluid mixer, and that is our fluid mixer. Awesome. Quest complete. Now, I need the thermonautic press which is reinforced slabs. I only need the three of them and heavy mach or light machine frames this time. So I do need some more iron plates. Eh, you know what? That's fine. Can't imagine. Four, eight. Should be fine. Should be fine. Round one. Here we go. And then I should be able to craft three of them. Oh, that's a lot of quests. <laughs> we need more compressed iron. So... I'm going to go ahead and buy some. I should have some Invar coins. Yep. And I'll go over here and trade with our lovely friends. Oh, that was all my Invar coins. My bad. And that should be our last thermonumotic processing plant. So we have everything we need. I do need one more set of LV connectors. I have enough relays and I need my wires as well. So wires, connectors, relays, and I have upgrades and I have 
my pipes basic. I'll grab both of them just in case. And I'll grab our water tank. Why not? We might need water for something. So we can go down here. Oh, we actually do need water for something. However, I don't think it should be a problem as I can run the water right into the yeast culture back here. All planned, by the way. I completely planned for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this cable through the top, which won't look as nice, but it's fine because we do need to run the water into the back of this guy here. So we'll go ahead and place our first thing, uh, processing plant down. This guy will take mushrooms in. So what I can do actually, you know what? No, I'm going to do it with the logistical transporter just because I'm not sure if it would only take mushrooms out of this guy. So I think that would just be a little confusing for it. We're going to go here, place another thermonomic. Uh, thermo pneumatic processing plant here we'll do another one and then here we'll do our sequential fabricator and then finally we'll have our fluid mixer now those are all the machines done i do need to provide this guy here with power and only this guy with power by the way not sure why i thought i had more to power however this should be as simple as plopping it up there and of course i ran into a cable issue i wonder would it be more efficient for me to run no it wouldn't I just, I, I really like this setup where it's like a, just a big L, right? Or a big, kind of, yeah, it's a big L actually. <laughs> hmm, how can I run this more efficiently? I guess what I could do is grab a pipe. Now this won't look very nice. However, I did get those redstone flux cables from the quest. So if I grab flux cable, I can actually go ahead and run these to power the machines. So if I do like that, this should be high enough. To not interfere there we go now that does look a little goofy but the setup should still be pretty functional overall and also flow very nicely so i do need to reset my flight because if i fall now this won't be the best because we're gonna go under the void or into the void and set up our logistical sorter i'll do mushrooms on blue i'll do that on green and then the sequential fabricator over here we'll do on cyan then we can go ahead and place all those back and in cyan, oh, I actually do need access to, do I have flight for how long? 15 seconds. Gotta go fast. There we go. So I do need a picture to this. So tomato is cyan. So we'll do new filter, item stack, tomato, and we'll set you to cyan. We'll do mushroom and mendostein. So mushroom is blue and mendostein is green. Mendostein actually worked out. The other two don't really make sense for color wise. However, these guys are all set up. Now we should be getting mushrooms in here any second now. Perfect. Over here we should be getting our mendostein. And then here we'll be getting our other one. So these guys will all work automatically because it needs between negative 23 and 60. Here, like I said, temperature 30. That is the exact temperature we want because it is at Y level 26. And then here, fluid mixer doesn't actually need anything but pressure. Ooh, but pressure. I guess I could run the pressure underneath. Oh, we're going to have to change that up. I said I wanted the pressure right beside. However, I guess I could run the fluid tank. No, I can't because the glycerol needs to be up top. You know what? That's fine. We'll make the small sacrifice of running our pressure like two extra blocks. It only needs two bars of pressure. So it's not that big of a deal. I'm not too concerned about loss of pressure over like two to three extra blocks. Now he should be pressurized. Yeah, he's past two bars. That's all we needed. And this entire setup should be automated in just a few seconds once I add pusher and puller upgrades to all of these fluid drawers. So I'll be back once I've done that. So it completely slipped my mind. The thermomatic processing plant also requires pressure to work, which makes sense because why would seeds just randomly be processed? But I guess you could say the same about a lot of the stuff over here. However, these two, these guys are mixing fluids, so I guess it's fair. I also want to mute that. Yeah, we'll mute the logistical server. It's pretty loud. However, this guy here will produce seeds now that I disable the redstone. It's that I had to let it build up power first. However, this guy will produce seeds, make vegetable oil, put it into this buffer fluid, this buffer drawer here, and then put it into the tank. And we're already making some biodiesel over here. We are getting mushrooms to make yeast culture and then ethanol over here. The ethanol is the bottleneck of this recipe. So to be fair, what you could do is set up a fluid pipe upwards, do two thermonomatic processing plants and then fluid pipe down. And we might do that in the future as this is the only bottleneck of the system. It is how much uh, ethanol you actually produce. 
However, we have made ethanol before, so it, we have a little bit of a buffer, so the vegetable oil will catch up. And then I do need one drawer to pull out the glycerol. So I'll go ahead and throw two upgrades on you, and we'll come back up here to grab a drawer, and then we'll run some fluid pipes up to our diesel generators. And now, obviously that disappeared instantly. However, we do have automatic battle diesel set up down here. We might expand on this in the future. However, I do think this is a good enough speed for things to be produced. So we'll leave that as that, and we should, cross fingers, never run out of biodiesel now. Oh, get 100% readout from Strasometer. Wow, we are capped out. Look at us go. So I can actually go over here and remove all of this excess because we don't need any of this anymore, which is super nice because it means we'll get all of our basins back. We will get our mixers back, our presses back. That we still need and i will need to connect this back up however there's a lot of stuff here i can get rid of okay and that is our entire ethanol system disassembled disassembled and we got a bunch of some resources back that we can use in future projects however for now what i want to work on is our next set of machines for the day and that is plastic generation because you will need plastic or and or latex for a lot of things like a lot of things and the first thing we need to go and do is make some fluid extractors. Jesus, what the hell? What was that? The FTV... Huh. Oh my god. The FTV devs really need to <laughs> relax with the new events they've put in the game. Holy cow. That, that terrified me. What is that called? Wait, what is that? The welcome here. No, it's getting started. That should be events. Enter my creeper. I don't see a creeper event. Can we turn that off? I wouldn't even know how. FTB events. Maybe just events. Yeah, there we go. Foggle. What is it? Creeper. Okay, that is staying off. That that spooked me. That spooked me real good. <laughs> Holy cow. That was yeah. That was that was not fun. That was very loud too. <laughs> Getting back on track, that very much distracted us. I need pretty machine frames once again out of iron. How do I keep running out? I have so much over here, yet I'm permanently out of iron. That is one thing we're actually going to have set up. I'll probably do that next episode alongside getting the rest of our machine set up, is I want to automate the processing of all of these ores so that we have ingot forms of all of them. Now the process to do that is actually pretty easy. I went ahead and farmed up some archer logs, by the way. That's why that's up there. So the process to do that's pretty easy. So we're probably going to do that next episode. However, I do want to go ahead and get all of our plastic generation set up. Because, like I said, we're going to need it for a lot of things today before we were rudely interrupted by that creeper. Okay, we can make ourselves our four fluid extractors. And I'm out of iron plates again. Gee, man, I'm telling you. I just, I have so much iron, yet I'm just not processing at the speed I need to be. That is something else that we will probably want to automate early on, is the plate production. That's pretty easy to do, so it's not too big of a concern. However, I have four fluid extractors, and now I need a latex processing unit, which is more iron again. Oh, this does require a bucket of latex, actually. So we will have to let our machines run for just a second more. But for now, we'll get everything else prepped for it. That should be that. Now, I want acacia, and we don't have any acacia saplings. So we're going to go over to our lovely missing shop vendor over here. Not sure where he went. Okay, so just in case you weren't aware, the reason we went ahead and grabbed ourselves an acacia sapling is if you right-click the fluid extractor to look at what you can do with it, you can actually see, oh, these are not these are for liquid methane. However, we're looking for latex. Now, the best produced latex is four millibuckets per job worked, and that will be from acacia. Dark oak is two. The rest of these guys are two. What? Uh, dark oak is three, sorry. What is this? Oh, spruce. Spruce is two. Dark oak is three. And then down here, papaya is one. So we want to go ahead and make four millibuckets per tick with our acacia log. And later down the line, we can actually make acacia with a phytogenic insulator. So once we have phytogenic insulators, which is quite far away from where we are right now, we'll go ahead and do that. But for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to manually farm a bunch of acacia, throw it in a drawer and say sayonara and get a bunch of latex. So that was about two stacks of bone meal worth, actually exactly two stacks of bone meal worth. And we got almost three stacks of acacia logs. That should do us plenty fine for a long time. So I do want to go grab myself a drawer, which I don't have. And we'll grab ourselves a drawer and a pusher upgrade. 
and I want a block placer from Cyclic, I believe. The block placer? Yeah, Cyclic makes the block placer. Oh, disabled due to claim production bypassing. Wow. Okay, they disabled the block placer. Interesting. And our only other option is one made of plastic. And this requires power. Ooh. Okay, that's annoying, however doable. Because the block placer from Cyclic is actually so much better and it's so much easier to work with. However, I guess we're going to have to make this block placer here. Now, another thing I want to go ahead and do is I want to make the steel cables from Ad Astra. Now, these will basically act as easier ways of piping power around right here. These steel cables. These transfer 1024 RF per tick. And it's just made with some steel and copper, and you get six of them per steel plate. So I'm going to go grab some steel, and we're going to make some plates again. Okay, so I've come down to our little farming area down here, and we're going to just do three fluid extract, or sorry, four fluid extractors in a pattern like so. These will mean all, they, they will all harvest a single block. That's why I'm not too concerned about having that many blocks be placed down. And what I want to go ahead and do is grab a fluid out of all of them. And I didn't really plan this out as I'm going to have to do a pusher in here. So if I do latex and I do push, this will automatically push into that one. However, I do need fluid pipes to actually connect the rest of them up. So like I said, with some fluid pipes, we can just go down the middle like so. And we'll set all of these guys to extract. Oh, we're in wrench mode again. And eventually we will power all of these with power because we will have our block placer down here. But for now, we have basic latex generation. And I will set this up for future. Do I want to flight? I only have 16 seconds left. Gotta go refresh that again. Okay, so I can hop down here and mark this out. Okay, now I feel a little safer down here. I'll mark that out, acacia logs. This guy will be pushing upwards. He'll go up and that'll go into the block placer there, which we'll be putting right underneath where the acacia logs are once we have enough latex to do so at least. And that is our latex production setup. Now it's very simple. All you have is four fluid extractors pointing into one acacia log, which will eventually have a block placer right there, which will be getting pushed up from a manually filled acacia log at the moment. However, in the future, we will have phytogenic insulators to provide us with plenty of acacia logs that we'll never have to worry about making a create farm. However, create farms are completely justified, and we could even use our worth sprigs if we had more to make acacia logs as well. However, I'm just going to do it manually for now. It is not too big of a deal. Now we have 500 millibuckets already. This is without power. However, if I do add power, like I said I wanted to, with my steel cables that I never crafted, as I was saying with the steel cables, I totally crafted. I can go ahead and connect all of these up to eventual power. However, at the moment, they won't be. Do I have this one powered already? Yeah, but for symmetry purposes, we'll go like that. And I can come up off the top back here. Who? How? Whoops, we're on server. Excuse me? What? What are the FTB devs doing, man? What are they doing? Why, why do they think they can add events like that to scare us? Like, what if I was in the middle of, like, a boss battle or something? Like, I could have been concentrating and I got jump scared. However, oh, that does not look ready, the connection. However, it is connected, I think. Maybe that's not connected. Oh, maybe we'll have to do a redstone flux connector in between. Now, that's going to look really ugly. <laughs> Because yeah, those don't seem to be getting power. However, I do have some flux connectors left. So if I grab a flux one, and these guys are made with a fluid encapsulated with destabilized redstone, we're nowhere near that at the moment. That's like a two or three episode away type thing. However, we can grab the flux ducts we did get from the quest and do something like this, hopefully. I don't know if that connects either, I'm going to be honest. You know what, we'll test it out, because it definitely wasn't connecting a second ago. However, if I do that, are you getting power now? You don't seem to be. What if I break the log? Will it fill up? No, these just these guys just aren't getting power from this. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay, well, these will be powered later in the future. It, it won't be a right now type thing. Okay, so we're going to go grab our first bucket of latex. Once again, you can't pull fluids out of drawers still. I'm not Actually, I'm not sure if this was fixed in the most recent update. I don't think it was, though. However, if I do something like that, no, I still can't pull fluids out of drawers. So what we're going to have to do is just move it into a tank for now, which is fine. Not a big deal. Grab our first bucket of latex, and we can actually send this back in now, just because we don't want this here. And we'll get rid of that, get rid of you. And now that our latex is there, we'll grab our latex processing unit. 
And that's another quest done, and a few quests actually, it seems. Actually, I think some of those are overlapping. Not entirely sure. However, I do want to go ahead and grab Latex. You know what? I kind of want to change this. I want to run something like this. Fluid drawer in the back like that. And then run this. I don't like how it connects like that, though. Do something like that. And we'll extract from you. And here, we'll do Latex, and we'll pull from the top and i also do want a drawer on the side for the, or compacting drawer not a regular drawer i did make a compacting drawer there we go i'm not sure if this will work and then latex or sorry output i want it to push to the side and we do need to give this thing power so that comes at the issue of how do we connect this thing because we know these don't work hmm it might have to be a little more ugly than this we'll have to do something like this for now yeah i, th I mean that's not even that ugly to be fair but We'll do something like that and we'll connect him with these connectors down here and i don't think that angle is going to work for me is it no it's not hmm. do i have the flux connectors on me still i do thank goodness because i know these do connect <laughs> so we'll grab a wire connector like this and zap ourselves a little bit to get some power going and also this does power two of our fluid extractors no, it doesn't. Not well enough. I don't have a crescent hammer. I do want to remove the power connection from those two. Okay, I had to go ahead and connect my mechanical crafter back up so I can make myself an iron gear just so I can make this crescent hammer so I can disconnect the power. So complicated. I really do need more diesel engines, like really, really bad at this point because, yeah, we're clearly running low on power and also uh, stress units. So both of those are things we're going to have to fix in the long term. However, uh, that is connected. I do want to disconnect these two from power. And I guess we'll try some puller upgrades. And if that doesn't work, we'll just have to go with a regular drawer. Yeah, 11. <laughs> we did make a lot of them. Just because I will be using these a lot as I do like no pipes as much as possible. Obviously, we do have pipes here. However, when possible, if I hit F3, that is north. When possible, I don't like pipes. Yeah, no, that just doesn't want to work. Okay, that's fine. We'll go ahead and do a regular drawer, and that'll automatically pump in. And then I wonder... No, okay, compacting drawers just don't like this. Can I even put this in here? Okay, what happens when I put 9 in? Okay, yeah, it just doesn't compact. Yeah, interesting. I mean, that's fine. It's not like I expect... I actually did expect it to. And I'm not sad that it doesn't, though. I do want to remove my upgrade. Okay, I did. Awesome. So now we have biodiesel set up with 324 glycerol already, by the way. We have plastic set up. So we can go ahead and actually lock this first. And we'll set up one on you, one on you, just in case of overflow. I don't think it ever will, but I do want to lock them with my locking tool, which I don't have on me, apparently. However, that should complete a quest getting that plastic, right? No, it doesn't seem like it did. Interesting. All right. Well, we do have biodiesel production set up today. We got our little farms with our garden cloches, and we have plastic production all set up. Now, next episode, I definitely want to focus on getting more power set up. So that means more diesel generators, hopefully. Maybe do a line of them, maybe eight or 12 diesel generators would hopefully bump us up to enough stress units because, yeah, that is... It's just not cutting at the moment. The power isn't the worst. We might add two of our coils back. However, we do want to be able to connect our cake factory back up as we aren't producing any more cakes. I should have like 100. I have 265 cakes. So we do have a decent amount of cakes backlog if we do need to use our mana in the meantime. However, I do need to connect everything back up. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it was a bit of a smaller one today. Wasn't too much. We uh, wasn't too long, but we did get quite a bit done in preparation for our future episodes. Now, hopefully next episode, we will see power generation go up. We will see ore automation double, and we will see the production of more and more yummy cakes. If you guys did enjoy this episode, now if there was something you guys would like to teach me, or if you learned something new today, leave it in the comments below. If you did enjoy this episode, don't forget to leave a like, and if you don't want to miss any future uploads or any other videos from me, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye bye